my name's Tim Taylor. I'm the series producer and creator of Time Team. I'm here to talk about our new exciting project called Dig Village. She's an absolute expert on anything to do with bones and burials and every time we get a site like this we think let's get Jackie in and because she knows time teams so well it's always great to have her along. What we're asking her about is a couple of classic questions. Um, Charlie's been working in this trench here and about five minutes ago she came up with this piece of bone. What did you say Charlie? I said oh I found a bit of bone. <laughs> <laughs> um, Whose is it? <laughs> Whose is it? The question is is it human or not? Very uh, uh, you know that's a, a question people often answer and I'm not sure I know the answer so what we're gonna give Jackie a chance to do is talk to Charlie about is this human or is it animal and how do you tell? So this is a really good lesson uh, if you're interested in bones and archaeology in general. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Right, so your question is, is this human? Yes, how can you tell? Well, there are two things about this which is going to make it slightly more difficult to, to, to demonstrate. One is that it's obviously a young individual, mm -hmm. right? And I know that because there's no... There should be an articular surface here, the articular end of the bone. Yep. Um, and you can see from this, this rather funny surface here, that's, that's not where the articulation would be. That's because this is a young individual and you would have had a, glo a growing end to that bone. Because the bone has to, has to expand, obviously, from being a youngster. And what you find is that the either end is separated in the young individual. It's separated by a, 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 a layer of, of cartilage, different kind of cartilage to what we wear on our bones as we get older and that will allow the, the, the bone to grow until it gets to the point it fuses. Um, so we have got a young individual there but the short answer to your question is that that is animal but what it is is the equivalent this is a I just happen to have a human bone of the same type it's a piece of tibia this is a piece of human tibia. Now the tibia is is the bit from the below your knee it's the it's the shin bone that bit there is the bit where if you used to play hockey and you used to get whacked around the leg as I used to do occasionally because I didn't get out of the way fast enough that's why it hurts and you can see how the bone actually looks very similar mm. you know it's got a similar kind of shape to it it's a lot smaller partly it's a lot smaller because of the the type of animal you're looking at but also because it's immature now obviously animals have most animals have the same kind of bones as humans do. There are, there are some which are slightly different, but most of them are the same. They've got tibia, they've got femurs, the same as us, they've got fibulas in their legs. But they will be, the differences are, are obviously going to be in size, because a lot of animals are either a lot bigger than we are, like cattle and, and horses, or they're a lot smaller, like rabbits and things like that. The ones that are closest to humans in size are pigs and large sheep. And I suspect that is probably a young, a young version of one or other of oh, those two animals. Okay. Um, but the other difference is when you when you get those two species is going to be in some of the basic form of the bone. Now that is dictated largely to do with the, the, what that bone has to do, what function it's performing and also what stresses and strains are put on it. And one of the main differences obviously between humans and other animals is that we walk around on two legs, we're bipedal and most of them are quadrupeds. And that means that there's different stresses put on the bone itself, it has the, the muscles will work in a slightly different way because they're moving in a slightly different way. Therefore, although the bones look very similar, there will be subtle differences. Um, because, and you can see in this case, for instance, this is, you know, if we're looking at the equivalent of this bit here, you can see it's much, much sharper there than it is, it is in the human. And that's partly to do with, with the way the human leg will, will move. Um, it's quite easy when you get the full bone. You'd get, like I say, you would go on the size, you'd go on what we call morpholo slight morphological changes. Morphology just means what it looks like, you know, what the shape of it is. But there will be slight morphological changes. Where you get into different, more difficult uh, territory is where you start to get um, only bits of bone. And sometimes you might only just get the inside bits as well. 
But again, even there, you will find there are slight variations in the structure inside the bone to do with the pressures of the weight of the animal, how the animal moves about, and I'm counting humans in amongst this as well, um, and the stresses and strains that are put on by how we move, where the muscles are attached, um, and that kind of thing. So if you were to just find, say, the inside of a like, you know, a human, yeah. I mean, how would that structure differ from, uh, you know, if it was to be a, a piece of animal bone, would it be more spongy or...? Yeah, unfortunately um, it's difficult. It would, it's always easier <laughs> when you've got a piece of bone that, that does look exactly the same, yeah. you know, it's exactly the same bone, so you can do the comparison. But if you look in here, you can see we've got compact bone on the outside, that, that basically very, very dense bone, and that's what gives the bone its strength, and it needs that strength in order to be able to take the stresses that are upon it, where the muscles, and then, Inside, you can see there's there's like little little channels in the bone. That's the medullary cavity, and that's where all the all the sort of various um, organic materials that we need to make the bone function quite often is, is all held in there. And what you find is that trabecular bone. It has a very slightly different appearance, and it's very difficult to explain. Uh, without actually being able to physically demonstrate it, but they do look very slightly different. Again, that morphology is just very slightly different yeah. inside an animal bone to what it is inside a human bone. Yeah. And that's what you would go on. If you've got bone that's not very well preserved, um, or it really is, a, a, the small fragments of rib particularly are a real nuisance because small fragments, some small fragments of rib, if they come from a certain area in a, a, um, a pig or a sheep, can look very can be very difficult to tell from human, yeah. but by looking at that the, the shape of of those little holes inside that that trabecular bone, they will be different between the two, and that's what you will often use. But if you've got very worn bones, that can make it very difficult because that morphology gets gets kind of dissolved slightly. Okay, well that's really good. <laughs> Um, Cassie tells me that you can identify any animal bone with your eyes closed, is that right? Yes, I can. <laughs> and how did you learn that skill? Um, one day, um, in a lab, looking at bones for my PhD, just got really bored. Then just started shutting our eyes and I was like, I wonder if you could identify bones with your eyes closed? And apparently you can. <laughs> so. Alright, so uh, I'm going to test this theory. So we've got some animal bones from some of the trenches today that Naomi hasn't seen yet. Mm -hmm. And Naomi, can I ask you to put on your blindfold for us? It's a very high-tech blindfold we've got going on. <laughs> okay. And you're sure you can't see? Of course you think. Okay, cool. Stay there. I'm going to get you some animal bones. Yeah, yeah, don't run away and leave me. Just study it like this. <laughs> I would never. Alright, let's see. We'll start with a bigger one. So we've got that for Naomi. Okay. Okay. Okay, this is an eye socket. An eye socket? It feels like an eye socket. We've got a, a, a grey tech, or like a, a brain like texture here, which you get in the skull. And you've got this shape. Yeah, I think it's part of an eye socket. I don't know whether it's the top or the bottom, but it's from like um, a horse or a cow or maybe even a red deer because we have had some red deer on site. So it's from a large animal. All right. So, okay. Let's move on to the next one and at the end I'll let you look at them. <laughs> She's like some weird game show. It is. What is this? This, this is a radio. <laughs> Unbelievable. That was not my idea. <laughs> Give me it. All right, now we've got another one, a much smaller one. Oh, I'm sure it's not just a twig. <laughs> yes, I'm not tricking you again. Ah, this feels funny on each end. It's very small. I think this is like um, a neonate, a very, very small um, animal. It might not even have come to full term. Uh, I think it's a, neo it's a tiny radius, a tiny, tiny radius. Probably sheep goat. Okay. All right, we'll try one more, yeah. and then we'll get you at the end. That's not a bone at all. 
a pen or a, a pencil with, without a rubber at the end, I think. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, seriously now, one more. <laughs> oh, bigger. Ah, it's that way around. Yeah, that is what we would call the thumbprint, or I nickname it the thumbprint, uh, which you get at the bottom of a femur. I think this could be horse actually. It's quite a big thumbprint, so yeah, I think it could be a horse femur. All right, well, why don't we have you take off your blindfold? Well, you did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Naomi. Thank you.